For those of you that don't know me, my name is Geoffrey Van Orden. I'm a British Conservative member of the European Parliament. Uh, I chair the delegation for relations with India. Uh, the aim of that delegation is to promote um, uh, understanding between uh, the Parliament and India and vice versa. Uh, and to, if you like, uh, promote the relationship between India and our European nations and indeed between India and the European Union. Um, this year marks the third Ayurveda Day for the Indian uh, government, but today's celebration here uh, marks the uh, first ever Ayurveda Day uh, in the European Parliament. So I'm doubly grateful to all of you uh, for participating in this event. I'd like to thank uh, in particular uh, Amajit Bamra, uh, who most of you I'm sure will know, who's uh, played a huge role in organising uh, today's event. I'd also like to thank uh, Her Excellency uh, Mrs. Gaitri Isar Kumar, uh, the Ambassador of India for uh, the European Union and indeed uh, Belgium, Luxembourg. <laughs> That's it. That's enough. enough. <laughs> yes. Um, I must also thank my assistant Juliet Inverdale. I don't know if Juliet managed to get back. Oh, there she is, the, the end of the room there, who's been running around um, making sure everyone ends up in the right place, more or less, at the right time. So thank you, Juliet. Um, Amajit Bamra has played a vital role in promoting and facilitating discussions on issues concerning all Indian traditional sciences uh, through the all-party parliamentary group at the uh, House of Commons uh, in the United Kingdom, um, all-party parliamentary group uh, for Indian traditional sciences. Uh, this, if I, my memory serves me correctly, this group was set up in about 2004 um, and is now has over 20 members of the House of, of, the House of Commons and it's helped build cross-party dialogue uh, on the topic of traditional sciences and parliamentary uh, awareness through uh, early day motions. Um, I was delighted when Amadri joined our India delegation meeting on human health, which we held in February of this year, when he had a, a, an opportunity to speak uh, about Indian traditional sciences. And I was delighted on my part to make an appearance at his APPG meeting in the Commons on uh, Monday, uh, 12th of November, a week ago, when um, not only Amajit, uh, but also uh, Dr. Atik and Dr. Joshi, both of whom are uh, with us here today, uh, most distinguished uh, teachers and practitioners of Ayurveda, uh, they were present. But I was also able to hear one of their pupils, um, a young lady called <laughs> Selina, uh, who um, uh, she gave what I thought was an excellent speech, but I'm slightly biased because I'm her father. Um, <laughs> that was a double pleasure. Um, the Indian Prime Minister, uh, Sri Narendra Modi, has been particularly active in promoting Indian traditional sciences. Indeed, he established a ministry of Ayush, uh, what we all popularly dub a ministry for yoga, um, and initiated World Yoga Day, which, by the way, we've also celebrated um, for a number of years here in the parliament. And we had, uh, the last time, we had uh, the Indian foreign minister with us, Mrs. Swaraj. Um, we also had uh, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar uh, here as well, who was a good uh, personal friend. <coughs> now, of course, um, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales and Prime Minister Narendra Modi um, unveiled a plaque in London on the 18th of April at the Science Museum. Uh, and this plaque uh, will soon be erected at a new and first ever Center for Excellence for Ayurveda in the United Kingdom. Now, I'm not sure where that plaque is going to end up, but it will certainly end up somewhere quite soon. Um, and Dr. Michael Dixon, who is chairman of the College of Medicine in the UK, will lead this center of excellence, which will undertake evidence-based research into yoga and Ayurveda. Um, 
to my mind, as both uh, a believer, I'm a Christian, a believer in a supreme being, and but also as one of life's uh, natural skeptics, if I may say. Um, I, I think uh, this idea of evidence-based research brings us to the nub of the, the, the issue. Um, how to make Ayurveda understood and acceptable as a complementary system to the West's allopathic uh, approach. Mm. And I think for us, this is the key question. I mean, others of you might have other central questions, but to my mind, this is key. It's all very well preaching to the converted, as we say, um, but it's the doubters who need to be convinced. Um, so I think the practitioners of Ayurveda need to be able to face up to criticism. And they need to come to terms with that and have answers to criticism. Now, I've seen Ayurveda described, on the one hand, as, at best, a healthy lifestyle that promotes a vegetarian diet and relaxation. Its insight into herbal cures is keen. Some of these herbs are being studied by Indian scientists and turned into reliable medicines. Herbs, after all, are the basis of conventional ph pharmacology. And at worst, the same person said, Ayurveda is a billion-dollar business of sham cures based on astrology, gem handling, psychic healing, mantras, and pop culture. That's the other take on all this. So this is, to me, it seems to me this is the challenge. So I think as legislators, um, and I'll only be a legislator until the 29th of March uh, next year when I'll be giving up this particular uh, profession. Um, but I think for legislators, and I'm delighted to see uh, Joe Leinen here, and I'm delighted to see Alois Petr here, <laughs> colleagues, one from Germany, uh, one from Slovenia, former Prime Minister of Slovenia, uh, and uh, Joe Leinen, very distinguished uh, uh, socialist politician. Uh, from Germany. I don't think, have we any other colleagues here from, from the Parliament at the moment? But others, I'm sure, will join us. Um, so I think the, the challenge for us is this, the scientific evaluation of Ayurveda and its recognition as a legitimate and very positive complement to Western medicine, focusing particularly on the holistic approach to disease and the fact that the mind and the body are inextricably linked. That is one part of it, and I think also, and I know this is a matter dear to the heart of my daughter, and I'm sure her tutors, an approved system for recognizing professional qualifications in Ayurveda. So I think these are the two uh, legislative challenges that uh, we face. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, enough from me. Um, we have distinguished speakers here, and I would like, first of all, uh, to give the floor to Her Excellency Gayatri Isar Kumar, Ambassador. Thank you.